everyone. I'm Megan McCarthy, editor of Africa Print, for joining us. Mental health is an important topic, especially during COVID-19. Nearly two-thirds of South Africans surveyed said their mental health worsened during lockdown, while some said they experienced suicidal thoughts. This is according to a survey by the South African Depression and Anxiety Group. Mental health is what we'll be focusing on during our Thriving During COVID-19 webinar, brought to you by Printing SA and sponsored by Agility and Health Squared. These organizations have partnered to unpack real issues businesses are facing and to advise on the solutions available. I'd like to welcome and introduce our panelists, Bianca Fulun, spokesperson for Health Squared Medical Scheme, Alri Van Sale, Printing SA Regional Manager for the Central Chamber, as well as Steve Tobella, Tobella, Novus Print Executive South. Just some housekeeping rules. If you have a question for the panelists, please post these in the question section. You will have a dedicated question and answer session after the panelist discussions. The chat section is just for general banter. And just a note on the free branded um, face mask giveaway that we promoted, all attendees should look out for further communications on this. Uh, Health Squared and Printing SA are hosted on the 25th of November from 12 to 2 at the Health Squared Agility Office in Woodmead, Gauteng, to select attendees. Uh, Marshall LaRue, Head Sales Executive at Agility Channel, will give an introduction to agility, followed by three experts who will be doing a panel discussion. The theme will be how to find the balance during COVID-19. Please RSVP in our poll section if you are interested in attending. So Bianca, let's um, cross over to you. Uh, if you can please explain the difference between absenteeism and presenteeism within the workplace. Thanks, Megan. Um, so, you know, due to the, um, the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent um, nationwide lockdown, we've, we've seen some very interesting trends emerge uh, within the workspace and, and more particularly with within the, the printing and packaging industry. So it's, you know, it's vital that employers in this space uh, get a good understanding of the difference and the impact absenteeism and um, presenteeism has, has on their businesses. So just to distinguish these two terms, firstly, absenteeism, um, you, the audience is probably very well aware of. I mean, that's uh, whether it's planned absenteeism from from the workplace, whether it's unplanned leave, um, absenteeism due to uh, illness or or something related. You know, that's that's the stuff that we can measure. It's 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 quantifiable. But presenteeism is a is a completely different term, and it's it's something that's impacting on our businesses in, to to an incredible. Um, Extent, you know, and it's something that that employers are going to be um, have to take take note of. So, presenteeism, in its most basic definition, means an employee is at work, but they're not being as productive as they should be. Now, this impacts on the South African um, economy on on a massive scale. I mean, uh, research has indicated that. Um, unproductive employees that are at work is costing the South African economy up to 89 billion rand uh, per annum. So we've, we've done some extensive market research to ascertain exactly what factors are contributing towards presenteeism. And, you know, this includes um, family issues such as uh, perhaps, um, you know, so psychos, uh, so social problems, um, it might be perhaps someone is going through a divorce, you know, and they're at work, but they, they're not really concentrating because they, you know, they, um, their mind is, is somewhere else. It could be something like um, illness that's affecting their productivity at work. And especially we find that in the printing industry, that has a massive impact, you know, because they very often work with, uh, within dangerous uh, circumstances, heavy machinery, that type of thing. So you ultimately want your employee to be at work, firstly be safe, but also be as productive and engaged as possible. So, so there's a, a significant factor um, in, in this presenteeism definition, you know, that, that employers are going to have to actively drive and, um, and take note of. 
Thank you. And then the next question pertaining to that is, how does this affect the employer and general employee productivity? So we just mentioned that productivity is could be directly affected by, um, by personal factors. And again, we've we've seen we've seen this impact um, quite significantly over the past um, six to eight months. You know, where we lockdown was a factor, um, and that that mental well-being um, has has declined quite considerably. And I mean, mental well-being from the um, employee's perspective could mean Something like um, depression has has had an onset because of um, you know their ability to earn an income. They're not able to earn as much any income as they did in the past, and um, some of these employees are stuck at home. You know, in, in very challenging conditions. So, employees' productivity um, and their their general mental well-being has been affected significantly. And again, a healthy, happy employee. Is generally a more productive one, but um, there's there's a significant focus on on assisting employers manage this. So from the employer's perspective, again, you know, it's uh, the absenteeism factor could, could contribute. So if if an employee is not at work, um, you know, wages have to be paid for for replacement um, for temporary employees. Um, overtime needs to be paid for the employees uh, filling in, you know, there might be an uh, inferior products uh, being produced uh, due to less productive or casual labour that needs to be um, needs to be gotten in, and low morale and, and dissatisfied employees generally, you know, contribute significantly again towards the the um, the business's uh, pr production and, and the overall outcomes. So, so this absenteeism and presenteeism factor. Primarily driven by mental uh, well-being, you know, has has vast impact on the employee's ability to earn an income on the one side, and the employer's um, ability to to function properly and and still produce um, a, a proper product as well as um, you know uh, contribute towards the business's bottom line. So there's a very mutually um, impacting factor driven by both absenteeism and presenteeism. Okay, great. And then how can employers in the industry effectively address and reduce challenges around productivity, absenteeism and presenteeism? So we find that um, proactive or targeted interventions uh, within this, this measurement of factors contributing towards uh, both presenteeism as well as absenteeism can significantly reduce the impact on pro productivity. So an effective employee assistance program, whether it be um, a, you know, sort of a core plan or a more comprehensive plan, can help employees to cope better, you know, with the um, personal challenges and also improve and, and better the, the um, mental well-being. So other interventions we find uh, that could contribute towards reducing presenteeism um, is stuff like debt management programs or just access to um, perhaps a debt counselor or a financial advisor. You know, um, financial troubles have um, significant um, effects on mental well-being as well as employees' productivity. You know, because it's it's it leads to significant um, amounts of stress. So um, financial education programs are very effective and general. Flexible insurance benefits, um, you know, that reduce the, the sort of insurance and healthcare channel in order to, to ensure that employees have access to, um, to proper healthcare services. And also, you know, rewarding um, good or healthy behavior. Um, and this could be through a internal or external rewards program and acknowledging good behavior. You know, if someone is performing well or, or if, they, if they are um, reaching targets or goals, stuff like that, you know, this positive reinforcement from the employer side, especially in, you know, in the current sort of very challenging um, environment that, that we're experiencing due to COVID is so valuable, you know, um, employees want to be seen and they want to be heard and whether they are seen and heard 
by the employer uh, through a rewards program or a employee assistance program or even directly, you know, a face-to-face -face conversation, um, obviously with a mask on, you know, is, is incredibly valuable. So, you know, ha employees having access firstly to, to these services and benefits um, have, have proper quantifiable impacts um, on the, the ability to, to manage, you know, these stresses and challenges that they're dealing with. Great, thanks, Bianca. Let's touch on the mental health trends and their associated factors. Um, I think you did mention this, but have you seen an increase in mental health claims in 2020 and specifically in the months following lockdown? Absolutely. So um, we've monitored our claims and benefit utilization on Health Squared medical scheme very, very closely since since the onset of COVID and, and the national lockdown. So the, you know, the subsequent impact on the economy and, again, workers' ability to earn an income, all these factors have contributed significantly um, towards um, uh, the, the utilization of claims. And more specifically, we saw very interesting trends emerge in terms of um, psychology visits, um, you know, psychological challenges uh, experienced and and con consultations with um, either psychiatrists or psychologists, and also um, hospital admissions when you uh, due to uh, psychological problems. So, um, subsequent to, to our evaluation done over the past six to eight months, um, we've identified a 26% increase in total admissions for recurring depression during 2020 when, when this was compared to 2019 rates. And then um, what mental health conditions are covered under um, PMBs and what are the requirements for this to be met? If you can just touch what PMBs are firstly and then go into the, the conditions. Absolutely. So PMBs are um, standard medical conditions or diagnoses that the Council for Medical Scheme prescribes that all medical schemes have to pay, um, no questions asked. So there are a couple of psychological conditions that are identified um, as PMBs. Now, PMB is generally a condition that's either life-threatening or life-changing. And these PMB conditions, again, have direct impact on, um, on employee well-being and employees' ability to, to do their jobs properly. So the clinical criteria for a PMB psychiatric disorder is, is pretty wide ranging and it's really the diagnosis is based on assessment of each um, and every unique individual. But to you know to, to put this into perspective, um, diagnoses such as bipolar mood disorder or schizophrenia, those are your typical PMB, very, very intense um, diagnosis. But um, but stuff like major depression is not necessarily a PMB. But um, it's it's so extremely important, you know, that that employees do have access to to some level of um, mental health care benefits because, you know, if if not treated proactively and these psychological conditions um, and related uh, factors, you know, could have very very long term um, impact on on both businesses as well as the well being of those employees. And then what are the most common reasons for mental health medical scheme claims? So we found, um, you know, in the past uh, major depression, again, over the past five years, have um, increased in diagnosis and utilization on the medical scheme significantly. But we do find that um, increases in diagnosis of conditions such as stress, burnout, PTSD as well as bipolar has basically skyrocketed over the past um, six to eight months. And, you know, this is definitely um, a contributing factor was, was lockdown. And, um, you know, so people, we find that people aren't as, um, as confident in themselves to, to go out and speak to someone, you know, it's, it's almost as if everyone's kind of retracted into their own space. And the more employees retract into their own space and, you know, don't feel 
confident enough to speak to an employer or to a human resource representative, that stress and that burnout um, has, has, has vast impact on their ability to come back to work and be productive. So we have seen, um, as mentioned earlier, a 26% increase in utilization of um, psych you know, psychology-related um, admissions and consultations. And again, it's, it's something that's, that's very vital and, and very specific, you know, to, to the employer space and, and more so to, in order for them to take note, um, you know, and, and start monitoring that very, very closely. Sorry, thanks, Bianca. I just uh, seem to have lost internet connection for a while there. Thanks so much. So now we'll cross over to Anne Alvey. Um, so, Alri, what was the biggest influence that leads to retrenchments, short-time and temporary layoff, and has it impacted employees' mental health in 2020? Thank you, Megan. Good morning, everyone. Um, I think we need to go back to where we started this year. Um, we will remember at the end of March, um, South Africa went into hard lockdown. Initially, this period was only supposed to last for three weeks, and it was later on extended to another two weeks. During this time, um, the printing industry and also suppliers to the industry could only operate with an essential services certificate. It meant that there was a lot of print printers, and in the printing industry, people were not able to operate. Um, after this period passed, um, Businesses were only able to operate with a permitted services certificate. Um, in that stage, it meant that stationary suppliers and manufacturers were able to operate on 50% capacity, and our traditional printers and suppliers on 30% capacity. Um, I think we had a lot of challenges. Um, you know, with what happened was businesses had to find out how are they going to survive this pandemic. Um, and with regards to the payment of staff, TIRS was a wonderful relief program that was brought in. Staff had at some stages had to make salary sacrifices. They had to work on a rotational basis. Everyone couldn't be at work the whole time. Um, the TIRS fund we have found has brought a lot of relief to a lot of businesses and that they're even phrasing the initiative and saying that it has helped. Um, an interesting initiative I've picked up on at some of our member companies was that they even supplied food parcels weekly to employees just to assist with those basic needs um, during this pandemic time. I think even for management, it became very, very hard to plan in advance. I mean, you can't plan from the one week to the next week because we didn't know what government was going to do. And all of this definitely had an impact on all employees that was involved in it and on management and has put immense treasure, treasure on everyone at work. Okay, thanks. So we've touched on the emotional impact. Now, if we can just unpack more about what is the emotional impact and men mental health issues when retrenchments are implemented from an HR perspective? I think, Megan, the first thing that happened is... Um, there's a lot of uncertainty, and there was a lot of uncertainty in this year. Um, we always think it's only the, you know, the employee that gets retrenched that has a that's influenced, but that's not the truth. Even employees that remain behind in the business, it has an impact on them. We have seen that management of businesses were tormented when they had to make decisions to go into retrenchments or short time. Um, we know that it has a psychological and a physiological health effect on people um, when you lose your job. We must also know that it's interesting that they say in South Africa, when a person is retrenched, that person probably has seven to 11 dependents that are related to that person. And from there, it also has a huge impact on the um, society and our country as a whole. Um, I think there was a lot of strain also placed on businesses and on the management. Um, they had to work out staggered work arrangements. They had to see how this pandemic totally plays out. Um, 
I think a big thing is also your staff that's left behind that do not get retrenched. They do become demotivated because there is a form of resentment being harbored against management for what has happened. Even though in labor relations, we say that retrenchment is a no fault situation. Therefore, the management is not blamed. Um, the employee is not blamed. I think a big thing that happened also is the economy was very, very strained. There was a big decline in um, the need for print and therefore it has influenced businesses in this sector. Um, we will also know that a lot of the time how we identify people is what's your job? What do you do? So it's this, in a sense a loss of a person's identity when they are retrenched. Um, it's interesting they also link being retrenched to a divorce. Um, you know, so it's a lot of loss and grief that one goes into. And if we just look at Kabler's Ross model for grief, um, there's a few stages that he identifies, which is shock, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and in the end, acceptance. So employees can go a few times through all of these cycles that they go to. There's stress, there's anxiety, they don't have the sufficient income and they know they've always had. Um, they become stressed looking for a new job. I think um, companies recruiting at the moment is not something we see every day. Everyone is trying to save money on their salary bills. Um, and what we also see is it would be good if the person being retrenched at this stage can talk to someone to deal and work through some of these issues. But as people are so scared about their finances and what to do, it's the last thing you're probably going to spend your money on. So there are some, um, you know, adverse effects to this. Great. Printing essay. How did um, printing assess members in relation to health-related issues? So as we saw that the economy opened up again, um, government has published um, an occupational health and safety COVID directive. Um, that meant that businesses had to do risk assessments for their businesses. Government gave us guidelines with regards to two masks needs to be issued to every employee. There needs to be proper cleaning, sanitation, um, all of these guidelines. Printing is is I also for its members compiled a risk assessment for the industry that assisted our members to implement um, these guidelines from government in their businesses. Um, we have assisted members also with a lot of hearings. I think from a labor perspective, this was a very interesting time for us. Um, and maybe this touches a bit on Bianca's point that she said earlier with regards to absenteeism. One would think that employees would be more inclined to come to work, to come when they are asked to, when there is work. But we have seen a lot of absenteeism, a lot of discipline has taken place for this. Also, employees not complying with the occupational health and safety rules and putting themselves and their fellow employees in jeopardy. Um, we've helped member companies dealing with positive COVID cases, What's the steps they must take? What's the things they must do? Where do they report it? And then also, if there was a positive case, do they clean the whole business, part of the business? Where do they go to for deep cleaning? Um, also, when we did went out on visits, um, we also advised members on their COVID compliance. Um, when we saw something wasn't wrong, we would have directed and advised them what the proper care was to take going forward. And then um, maybe something else I can just mention is that um, Printing is A during this time has done a lot of background work um, on our website for people that were retrenched. They would have been able to go and load their CV um, online. Um, in that, that way, they would be able to connect easier with positions in the industry. Our members also have the um, functionality on our website now to place vacancies and people can apply for those vacancies online. So even though this might have been a very doom and gloomy stage, there's always um, a silver lining at the end of the belt.
I think we're just waiting for Megan to come back. She has lost internet connection. It would be interesting to get an understanding of, uh, from printing SA's side, what are these sort of health conditions um, that you find to be the most prominent uh, amongst your, your members? Well, I think um, one must realize that there is um, a big stigma still, I would say, in South Africa regarding health conditions and um, employees are generally scared to be victimized for the fact that they might have a bipolar disease or they might have um, depression of some sort. Um, it's in very few instances in the field that we work that we feel people are um, open and honest, to be open and honest about these things. Um, you know, in a labor relations type of atmosphere, you follow a different procedure if someone has a medical condition or a medical incapacity. Um, it's not to say that someone with bipolar disorder cannot make a contribution and cannot work in the workplace. I think it's very important that that person should not be victimized for the illness they have. Um, it's not a flu, it's a chronic condition, we know that. Um, and I think people sometimes don't even know they have it. I think there were also challenges during lockdown for, em for employees to get the medical attention they needed, to be able to visit the clinics, get their chronic medication, see the psychiatrists they were working with. So I think those were challenges that we also had. Um, yes, and we are able to assist members um, with Ill incapacity, ill health procedures, should they require it, and the employer-employee relationship needs to end. Absolutely. Okay, interesting, thank you. Steve, there where you are working um, at the moment, is there any um, mental health conditions you guys have picked up on specifically, or nothing so much at the moment? What are the biggest challenges you faced with? And I think really it's uh, the same things that you enlisted earlier. It is the same challenges um, around about depression, um, similar conditions basically where I think because of the lockdown, people are just going through very difficult times. And as mm -hmm. a result, we have had to deal with um, a few of uh, these issues that were coming to our HR department as well. Yeah, so. But, uh, similar challenges. And Steve, sorry, I'm just interested with regards to motivation of staff, has that been a challenging experience for you guys? Mainly because or did you not pick up that up so much? No, I think it, it came up for the same reasons that you've listed, because of the COVID-19 and the lockdown, uh, most companies have had to review uh, the uh, structures and as a result, the section 189 resulted. And once you have a section 189, you have a challenge. And some of the companies, you know, previous years, you would have been going through section 189 un unbeknown that they've come 2020 and you have to do another one or something like that. Now that impacts on the morale very much so because you know it's one after the other it's as if you are not planning but the company is actually planned we know what we're going to do but come up a, a, a situation that we had not no one has planned for no one has ever thought of and suddenly mm. it hit you and when that happens then you're dealing with another section 189 and i think in the printing industry as we all know there has been major um, cl uh, close down of businesses and as a result of that uh, printers have to right size. You know, it's not a matter of, as I often emphasize, it's not a matter of print is outdated, print is dying, print, you know, all the negative things. But it's a matter of right sizing because you have to right size and look at the future and make sure that you are sustainable. But in the process of doing that, you are going through a section 189s and you are going through restructuring, you're putting people in different positions than where they were comfortable for many years. No, no doubt at some point your uh, mora the morale in the organization will be down but i think it's also a call on management to say what do you do then you know um as i'm talking to you i'm engaging with our hr and we're saying let's find creative ways to rebuild that morale we cannot just complain about it but we have to find a way to rebuild it. 
key to that, by the way, if I may add, key to rebuilding the morale, I think it's important that we emphasize that, you know, some businesses, of course, they were challenged to an extent that they basically have had to shut down. But for those of those businesses that survived this era, um, they must realize that to boost the morale, you need to show the people the long-term vision. They need to see that you did not retrench or uh, reduce staff because you in trouble, you're shutting, but you're doing so more for sustainability. I think uh, Elry touched on the point for those who are staying behind as employees, they need to know that there's still a future in this organization. You know, they will not uh, put everything they can if they do not uh, see a possibility of a future in the organization. And so I think the message is loud and clear. Prove to them that it's actually it's a, it's a sustainable thing that you've done. You're not retrenching because you're in trouble, you're about to shut down, but you are rather creating sustainability. I see Megan is back with uh, Shania. Shania, how are you? Haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> Hi, Steve. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a long time. It's nice to actually see you online, even if it's not in real life. Sure. So I'm sorry, Megan's just having some connection issues, but I can um, run through your questions with you. Thanks, Elri and Steve, for carrying the information and carrying on. Um, Steve, you served as chairman of Health Squared. Can you please share your experience with the scheme with um, the audience? Maybe just to give a, a, a brief background, why was that important, you know? The relationship between the printing federation, printing SA as we know it, and many would still say printing industries federation of South Africa or PEFSA, it's very important that we understand that background as to why this relationship with the medical aid was important and why when I was appointed or requested to serve on the board of the medical aid, um, I accepted and uh, was happy to do so. If you think about the printing industry for the 108 years of the existence of the printing federation, it has always been seeking uh, for opportunities for members as to how can we really give the best opportunity to the printing industry. And up until the 1990s, when we had the National Industrial Council, the printing industry has been well organized, well regulated, and the federation was actually playing a vital role and I think when I came in, I understood that. And I wanted to see uh, the Printing Federation continuing to play that vital role. And that was the reason I accepted to serve on the medical aid, because it is not just a medical aid, it's also what other um, uh, service providers or stakeholders that can contribute to the printing industry. Because if you have your medical aid, you've got your pension fund, you can lobby government, you can do all of those things, then it's almost a one-stop shop for a printer or a member of the federation. If they need anything, they can come to us. But what was important more so with the medical aid, it was that we need to find a medical aid that's very relevant to the industry, that is unique because the, 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 if you think about a big medical aid that will not even understand the shifts in the printing industry or how the industry operates or what are the real needs or challenges of that particular industry. So for me, serving as a chairman of uh, Spectramet at the time, which uh, subsequently it was matched with health resolution to form the health squad, I played a role somewhere there also bringing these two together. And I served as the first chairman. It's a great honor of the health squad, by the way. And if, I'll wait for a few months. But it was exactly for those reasons, because I saw an opportunity that a medical aid that is unique to the printing industry, that can serve the printing industry the best way possible. It was absolutely necessary for, for, for me to continue that role. So yes, we have even come up with a few um, options or unique options for the printing industry. Thanks, Steve. You've done a lot of work and, and we really appreciate that. And it's actually, it was, it was really relevant um, that you could join the panel today just to give us that insight. So the next question is about the medical aid industry. It's highly regulated. Would you like to share how the scheme is able to offer benefits or services that are unique to the print 
packaging and signage industry, just to elaborate a bit more on your last answer. You, you hit the, the nail on its head when you say it's highly regulated. And as a result of the medical aid industry being so highly regulated, it becomes quite a challenge to actually come up with benefit options that are suitable for individual industries um, around the world. But even with that particular challenge, um, we, we came up with very unique options of the structure of the benefits that we came up with as a, as a health squared were very unique and unique in a sense of addressing the particular needs in the printing industry. Just to maybe highlight a few, if you think about the traditional options, the way we had them, they did not have a savings on them. Then we had to find a creative way to say, how do you build as, um, benefit structures that somehow you can build a savings that is linked to these traditional options? So it was a unique thing. Why is the savings important? Because we all know what the, uh, the inflation is in the medical aid uh, uh, industry, in the medical industry generally. And probably your benefits will be depleted in no time. So the savings becomes absolutely necessary. So there was a, a unique approach to say, how do we link the savings to the traditional options that traditionally did not have a savings? we looked at how do you service the industry and i think service is very important especially health squared in this regard is done exceptionally well i must say um, how do you eliminate multiple points you know when you have a situation somebody's ill in your family the last thing you want is to phone that um, particular um, what do you call them these uh, places that you phone and then you get a machine an answering machine and then you have to phone somebody else and so many contacts Whereas with what we have structured in Health Squared, your gap cover is there, your savings is there, your benefit is there. So if your benefit is depleted, you switch automatically to the savings. And if that is not adequate, your gap cover kicks in. You don't have to phone and phone and phone. All of these benefits are linked one or another. And that is a very helpful and a unique service that has been offered by this medical aid. And I think we built that deliberately so. We looked at um, a medical aid that will offer um, benefits from the highest level. You've got some senior executives in organiza certain organizations and very junior staff. And because of the uniqueness of the earning structures, you then find that sometimes it's a problem to have one medical aid because some of them are, you know, they pitch at a very high level and some at a very low level. But this particular medical aid is able to cater for all the types of innings. And it's structured so deliberately to accommodate the structures in the printing industry. There's a free rewards program that is very unique program as well. I think we all know some of the programs that are there. They were speaking to flying and uh, being able to get some points so that you could fly. Uh, but a low earning employee would be flying where and what benefits would they get? So you had to come up with the rewards option that would speak to those land, uh, lower earning employees as well, that they also get some points. Um, and some of these medical aids are linked to a particular gym. So this medical aid was in particular looking at wherever you exercise, wherever you get your exercise would be able to accommodate you. The well-being program, I mean, if you listen to Elri and Bianca earlier on, touching to the uniqueness of the mental health, you will see the importance of that well-being program in a workplace environment. Absenteeism and presentism, as it was defined earlier, uh, cannot be addressed if you do not have programs like that. And I think this medical aid has a very unique um, program in that regard, which is very, very helpful. Another important factor is the um, risk premium. You know, medical aids that don't have adequate risk premium, uh, it's, it's a challenge. You need to actually make sure that whatever medical aid you have, it's, 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 it's an affordable risk premium that is paid. Otherwise, it's a huge amount that you have to pay elsewhere. So that needs to be covered. And lastly, the gap cover. Now, for me, these benefits are structured unique. You may hear, because of the regulation, you may hear another medical aid talk about these. But if you look at the content of what is in there, you will find a, a, a lot of unique um, arrangements that we've made within there to cater specifically for the printing industry. 
Thanks, Steve. I mean, it sounds like a lot of thoughts has gone into providing solutions for um, the, the workers within the print industry at all the different levels, and I think that's important. But one more question for you. Um, given the challenges brought about by COVID-19, do you think the scheme could assist the industry in some way in its way to recovery? I think the impact of COVID-19 really comes down for most of us in, as businesses in the cost. Uh, we're going to have to manage our costs very tightly. And, and while you're doing that, on the other hand, you have a challenge because um, you want to continue to give the employees the best benefits possible. So on the one hand, you don't want to cut the benefits. On the other hand, you are trying to also say, I have to manage my cost in the business. Now, this medical aid, that's where it could possibly assist you. Because as I said earlier, you've got benefit options that are, you know, can be structured in a way that suits the particular company. So people can actually look at what I'm currently, what option I'm currently in, what would be more suitable under these circumstances, especially if my earnings are changed to whatever the situation is. And with time, when a situation improves and people's uh, remuneration are reviewed and whatever, they can again look at what, what options could they move to that would cover them better. Now, you don't have to switch between medical aids to do that because we've got these options that are available in, in this particular medical aid. I keep on saying we, as if I'm still uh, um, the chairman. You know, I've been chairman for so long, so I'm still talking like the chairman. Uh, so I'm sure the chairman is listening. Please forgive me, you the chairman. But <laughs> it's important that you understand the benefits option, the way they're structured to the benefit of the industry. And I believe that for the uh, COVID-19 uh, situation, we will find that it will be a very helpful tool to look into that and see how it, it can be used to benefit the industry as a whole. Thanks, Steve. I guess, Sam, um, yeah, you were the chairman for a while, so it must be hard to take that hat off, but we really appreciate your input. Um, moving on to Bianca. <laughs> Um, Bianca, we've got a question from the audience. Um, what sets the print solution apart from the other packages that you offer? So the um, the Printing SA um, partnership with Health Squared and Agility Printing has um, has been structured over a number of years, and obviously, you know, we 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 combined and we built the solution um, with with input from from key uh, printing SA uh, and printing industry players. So there are um, a number of advantages, you know, and, and unique benefits that we've that we've built around the needs of, of the printing sector. Firstly, being an, a free employee wellbeing program. So the employee wellbeing program we touched on a little bit earlier, and we see that almost as the softer side of employee benefits. Um, it can also be referred to as the glue. Now, employee wellbeing programs, you know, speak to that that very much that defined need for um, for assistance on um, financial matters, for instance. You know, um, very very often employers think that they contributing towards medical scheme um, premiums, for instance, and they think that you know their job is done. But if you if you can go to a doctor, but you can't speak to someone about your financial problems, you know, then then you know, you might be equally as um, as unhappy or as unproductive at work. So um, these employee assistance programs that um, that were built, you know, was was in in direct response to needs identified within the printing sector. So the um, agility program that we that we uh, offer to all Health Squared members um, included unlimited telephonic helpline for financial advice. Um, uh, stuff like debt counselling assistance, um, legal advice and legal assistance, mental, uh, uh, psychological um, advice from from you know clinical professionals, and and a nurse helpline. And in in that you know there's also a COVID helpline to assist with perhaps trauma that members have experienced um, associated with COVID. Perhaps they've been diagnosed and they don't know how to deal with this. Um, perhaps they're just ill and they don't know who to speak to, they can't access a doctor. So, so things like this have, have passed on, um, on the printing industry. And so all our household members. 
Sorry, and just to elaborate on that, um, Liang, what things were there for mental health in addition to anything you may have mentioned already? So, so on, so, sorry, um, Shania, just, just the last point. So for all printing SA um, employees that are on Health Squared, they get this, this um, employee wellbeing program at absolutely no cost. And the cost that you can sort of just associate with it um, is more or less between 30 and 70 rand per employee per month. So, you know, whether you have a, a staff complement of five people or, or 500, um, you know, it could, it could contribute significant value. Um, and then to touch on your question around what mental health uh, benefits uh, are offered by Health Squared, obviously we, we do offer um, unlimited cover for PMB psychological conditions. As mentioned earlier, um, uh, that's, that includes bipolar, it includes um, uh, schizophrenia, you know, and, and any of those, whether it's, whether it's PMB, those mentioned, or whether it's something not as severe, just like a major depression or PTSD um, or stress or burnout, we offer, offer cover, cover for those as well. And um, those conditions are, are very specifically managed by our managed care team. And so when a member joins the scheme and they are diagnosed with one of these conditions, they are essentially registered on our patient-driven care program. And this program is uniquely developed by, um, by Agility for Health Squared members. And that really means is that each and every one of our members with one of those conditions um, are allocated with a personal health care coordinator. So it's almost, to, to put it into context, it's like a it's like a personal banker, but just within your medical scheme space. So then they have a qualified clinical person who can who can actively assist them, um, you know, with management of their of their condition and and also assist and advise on how to access their benefits and make best use of of those benefits um, that they have available. So um, as as part of this program, you know, there's there's also assistance with perhaps network providers that they can get their medication um, at, at, at decreased rates and um, to decrease co-payments. So, so we've, had, we've had extensive focus on building a, um, a program, you know, around the management of mental, uh, mental well-being, mental conditions and, and um, ongoing well-being of our members. Thanks, Bianca. I'm um, back. Sorry about the connection issues. Um, so, Bianca, what support are you providing as a medical scheme in the current pandemic climate for medical scheme members with mental health issues or even just members battling with high levels, high stress levels? Absolutely. So, we've noticed that, um, you know, sort of during lockdown and even post lockdown, there's been a, a really big sort of, you know, it was almost like a, a mass focus um, by the industry and by media on employee wellbeing programs. But we've we've acknowledged the value of employee wellbeing um, for the better part of the past 10 years, you know, that we've been um, uh, sort of involved in the printing industry. And and so we've we've had this free employee wellbeing program um, offered to to printing SA members at no cost for a number of years. And and it's it's actually just become so much more important now. So while we've had it all these all this time, um, I don't think that you know employers or employees have really recognised its value in in the broader sense. So um, we find that the free employee wellbeing program that assists members, you know, with with that telephonic helpline that they can speak to someone in their own language um, that's available twenty four seven contributes um, real quantifiable value towards employees' well-being and also employees' ability to offer benefits um, to the employees in, in the sense. And we also find that, you know, employees very often don't, don't feel that comfortable in speaking to, to an employer directly or even um, an HR representative, you know. So, so if they don't have that comfort or, or if they're scared or, or something like that, you know, then they have this telephonic helpline to, to kind of guide them through the process. And while it's confidential, this, this helpline is 100% is confidential, 
we can still then, you know, engage with employers, um, which we do on a very regular basis, to inform them just by saying, you know, we, we're picking up trends like um, there are a vast number of calls when it comes to uh, financial problems, or there's um, there's a real need in your organisation for um, perhaps face-to-face -face counselling, um, whether it be PTSD uh, or post-traumatic stress disorder or major depression, you know, we can then assist the employer in also, you know, in enhancing focus um, in a certain level or perhaps educating employees um, uh, in line with these trends that we identify through this, this helpline. So it's it really does um, contribute value both towards the employer as well as towards the employee in building a, a sustainable um, human capital structure. Great, thank you so much. And then we have just a, um, a question from the audience. Um, there is a concept termed slow strike. Can you elaborate on that? And what are some of the causes of this that you've identified? Yes, so that's that's actually a very interesting case um, or, or question. So we, we had a case like that a couple of years ago where an employer um, who was very, uh, they were very active in the sort of manufacturing space, um, contacted us to do an assessment um, on their levels of productivity. So um, we, we sent in our, our team of specialists and did an assessment, you know, to see perhaps um, to identify what, uh, maybe it's like illnesses, you know, or, or real, real, you know, stressful situation um, that, that might be contributing towards low productivity. And um, we then ascertained, you know, after a, a month or two's um, uh, in-depth investment that, that these employees were actually on a slow strike. You know, it was, it was kind of like a silent thing. But what happened was the slow strike, uh, because it, it, you know, it's, it, it wasn't something that was kind of shouted out loud um, or, or like it wasn't a protected strike, but they they were unhappy. These employees were inherently unhappy with a number of circumstances in the workplace. And um, they then basically, they came to work, again, that whole presenteeism factor coming in, um, but they were doing like half the productivity that, that they would normally, you know, and, and the employer picked this up, you know, but they didn't know how to, how to speak to this problem because the moment you see productivity dropping, you know, it's something that's not just going to go away. So you're going to have to address that very specifically, very actively. And slow strikes, um, you know, worldwide uh, is a real thing. And that's very often in response to, to employees um, not being happy at work and really not knowing how to voice uh, their concerns um, effectively. Sorry, thanks, Bianca. My mic, um, my mic is unmuted now. Just would you like to touch on the um, the Wellness Day Agility is holding on the twenty fifth of November, and um, just what it entails and what people can expect. Yes, so we're very very excited to present this um, this Wellness Day to the Printing SA members, and just in you know in as part of this conversation and as part of this this vast perceived need. Um, that that employers in in the space have for you know for sort of coping tools and mechanisms on how to manage employee well-being and productivity during these very challenging times um we we're holding a wellness day for printing sa members and um we're going to be having talks with a number of um you know, industry uh, specialists and clinical specialists that that are going to be speaking to um to the, the, the sort of identified need and um, challenges that employers can look out for. And then also um, a uh, someone who specializes in trauma, you know, and, and dealing with sort of post-traumatic uh, situations and, you know, kind of just giving employers that, that mechanism in, in how to improve the, the state of their employees. And then um, members can also, you know, get some sort of screening test done and they'll have a a light snack and, and just a you know and a, a very productive conversation um, amongst each other in terms of what well-being means for the industry and and how we can take this forward in a way um, that that's tailored for for the printing and packaging industry great thanks so um attendees still have a chance to um 
express their interest in the in our poll section if you'd like uh, to attend printing essay and health squares wellness day on the 25th of november and um, please indicate your interest we'll also be sending out further communications um, about this so I think that is all the questions have been answered. Um, I don't know, Bianca, if you just want to maybe end off with um, just on a on a closing note. Yes, um, just, uh, thank just you, Megan. Webinar. Yes, thank you, Megan. And and I'd like to um, you know also thank Steve and Alri for their uh, very very uh, positive contributions, and just a a last sort of thought and a you know a last comment that. I'd like to um, leave the audience with is that an, a happy, healthy employee is going to be a more productive employee and he is going to be, he or she is going to be a less absent employee, whether it's absent in, in physicality or whether it's just mentally absent from the workplace. And you know, it's Employee benefits or just subsidizing employee benefits to a large extent is very often expensive. You know, it's it's a massive, massive contribution. But the moment that employers start measuring firstly the well-being of their workforce and allowing them access to proper healthcare services, they will most certainly um, see the the uh, return on investment over the long term. So it's it's not a waste of money as long as it's um, actively monitored. You know, utilization and, and access to benefits and um, also monitored in terms of how how this is improving the, the well-being of your workforce. Um, we you know we, we guide the employers through that and we uh, we consult with them on a regular basis to, to to quantify the value of those employee benefits. We we find that um, you know it's in the long run that investment does pay off. And um, yes, other than that, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, so that wraps up our session. Don't miss the next free webinar hosted by Printing SA on the 26th of November, where you can be inspired by the panel of experts to thrive, disrupt, and elevate digital print. Printers need to focus on marketing to be more customer-centric, focusing on the experience and information customers have about their digital print services and solutions is key to increasing the bottom line. So that'll be held on the 26th of November and communication will be sent out shortly on this. Thank you so much to Printing SA, the sponsors, Agility and Health Squared. And thank you so much to our panelists, as well as our attendees for watching. You can find the replay of this webinar, as well as our other informative webinars on africaprint.com live. Thank you so much and take care. Thank you very much, you too, Megan, and all the organizers. Thank you for uh, to all the colleagues that on the panel. Thank you very much.